Hey, Shalom Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, Lord. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. As always, it's a pleasure seeing everybody here today. And um, we're going to have another dynamic lesson to be the Father's will. The one year ministry of Yahweh Shalom Mashiach, part two. All right. Everything is spelled right. The one year ministry of Mashiach, <laughs> part two. <laughs> okay, hallelujah. Okay, um, before we get started, anybody have any testimonies or anything they would like to share? All right. Uh, the Father's I been. Think so, Lord. Every, the Father's been good, you know, all the time. Everything's been told. Hallelujah. Very good. The same here. I can never thank the Father enough for all the great things he's been doing for me. Um, I'm forever in his debt. And because of that, I can't go nowhere. <laughs> nowhere to go? Nah, nah, absolutely. There's nowhere to go. So, full steam ahead. Let's go ahead and do what we have to do. All right. The Father is the most important thing in our lives. We must make sure and always that he stays the center of all of our um, attention. All right. Hallelujah. So again, I'm the one year ministry of Yahoo Child Mashiach. I'm going to blow the shofar seven times and we'll have the next in charge. We have Shalomo to bring us in with prayer and we'll go ahead and get started and do what we do. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Let's see what we got with the shofar today. <laughs> another set of parts Shabbat. Thank you for waking us up this morning and letting us be able to make it here today to fellowship with you and just take part in your set apart day and giving all esteem and thanks to you for everything that you do in our daily lives. From waking us up in the morning, to giving us breath in our, uh, in our lungs, clothing us, feeding us, and just making sure everything works the way it's supposed to. Um, I pray that you keep us throughout the week, meet everyone at the level of their needs. Um, mm -hmm. Clean up all the sickness that is in the congregation and just make sure everybody's everything and everything is good with everyone. Um, and I pray that you just keep us until you can return. Thank you uh, for your son, uh, Yahushua Mashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. And like Shalom said, we want to make sure that we give um, all the esteem to the Father, thanking the Father for everything that he's been doing. For the nation of Yahshua all, we want to um, send out our prayers to Mori Eliyahu, our executive Mori. He's not feeling um, too good today. Um, Abad Yahu, um, our armor bearer and tactical trainer. We want to <laughs> give him a big shout out. And um, all the great work that um, our elder Zabud Yahu was doing, uh, we're always thankful and grateful for everything that he does for the congregation of Yahshua all. So we just want to make sure that everybody stays focused. Everybody understands the importance of coming together. Everybody understands the importance of family, unity, shalom. All of that is going to be very important in these last days to help us to stay together as a family. All right. So that's going to be very important for us to stay together as a family. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Ricard, we're going to be going over part two of... The one year ministry of the Mashiach. I'm going to have to take a, uh, a different approach with this. Uh, and the reason why is because I have no church background affiliation. So uh, <laughs> I just never grew up in a church. So a lot of things that I'm, I'm learning as I have certain conversations with certain people. And um, some of the conversations I'm just not too familiar with because, again, I've never gone to church. Um, the closer that I've gotten to, quote unquote, religion before coming into the walk was Islam. With the, uh, the teachings of uh, Louis Farrakhan. But as far as the whole church thing, I'm not too familiar with that. So, um, 
been hearing a couple of different arguments um, about how long was the Mashiach's ministry. Some say that it was three years, some say three and a half years. But I have here in bright blue letters, um, one year ministry. Okay, so um, I was trying to get some feedback on maybe uh, how is it that the church is actually calculating and where they're coming up with this three and a half year or three year ministry. And uh, what we're going to be doing is trying to get a, an understanding on the harbinger or um, the forerunner, John the Baptist. John the Baptist is so important because he actually paves the way for the coming of the Mashiach. And then um, understanding, according to scripture, who is John the Baptist? Some people believe that he was in the scene. Um, I don't believe, and according to um, my historical um, research and, and doing my readings, that he was not in the scene, but he was actually um, a Zadokite. And that's going to be um, very important. John the Baptist was actually... Uh, of the eighth course of Abijah. Let me write that down because I've been saying that a lot. John the Baptist was a Zadokite. This is the right or the rightful bloodline of the Levites. Okay, these Zadokites here. All right, Zechariah was of the eighth course. The eighth course. So when Zechariah died, this priestly position now goes to the son. Okay, the Ben in Hebrew means son, and that passes down now to Zechariah's uh, and Elizabeth's son, which was John the Baptist. Let's put that here. John the Baptist or John the Immersive. What's so important about John the Baptist is that John the Baptist came from a particular location. He was not living in Jerusalem. John the Baptist, anybody knows where John the Baptist was living prior to his ministry, six months before, who was born six months before the Mashiach. Anybody know where John the Baptist was dwelling at prior to his revealing or revelation with the Mashiach? It wasn't Jerusalem. No. No, 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 no. I don't think that's somebody else. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, he was actually living in the um, Qumran community. Qumran. Where we have the Dead Sea Scrolls. All right, the Dead Sea Scrolls. So, um, to understand this prophecy here, we're going to go first to. Um, the book of Daniel, and we're going to read a little bit. We're going to do some reading here. Let me see if we can make heads or tails, as always, of this situation. And um, where's my little plastic bag at? Oh, got to, um, if you get a good brother. Jacob. If Jacob, I mean, if you, this little plastic bag that's over here for me, please. Hey, where are you going? Uh, thank you. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to do some reading here. Um, this will be some very important things that's going to come up. I'm going to make sure that we have a nice, good understanding of it. Maybe we we'll do it do it this way. No, nope, we'll do it this way. Um, Daniel's the ninth chapter. Um, in the first year of Darius, this is Daniel's the ninth chapter, verse one. In the first year of da um, Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. All right. So we know that the first um, kingship of power that Israel went under, I mean, the first king is the Babylonians. After the Babylonians or the Chaldeans came the Medo-Persian Empire. So now we have the Medes, okay, the Persian Medes. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof 
the word of Yahuwah came to Yahu, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. 70 years. So, I want to make sure everybody is running with me. How long did Israel stay in Babylon because of rebellion? Yeah, it's going to be kind of tight. Um, remember, we just said it was 70 years, right? 70 years. The 70 years is going to be very important because we're going to have to now identify how is Daniel counting this time. We have a lunar count, which is 354 days. We have a lunar count of 300, uh, a solar count of 364 days. And we have a prophecy count of 360 days. So this is solar along with uh, agriculture. This is lunar, a lunar count. And this 360 is a, um, a prophecy count. It's a prophecy count. So, 360 days in a prophetic year. So we have 360 times 70. We're going to need our mathematicians, all the zeros here. 7 times 6 is what, 42? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Right? 2,520 days that they spent. 25,000. Oh, 25,000. That's right? Yes. Okay, there we go. 25,200 days in 70 years using 360 days as a prophetic year. So again, this is a prophetic year. This is a solar ag um, agricultural year. 354 days is a lunar year. Mm -hmm. So this is how long Israel stayed in, um, in Babylon. 70 years, which is equivalent to now 25,200 days they spent amongst the Babylonians. After the Babylonians, we have the Medes, all right? The Persians here are now in reign. So again, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the, uh, the Father came to Yerubiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. If we can get Shalomo, if you can read Yeremiah, the 25th chapter, verse 12. Let me get it with you. 25 and 12. The book of Yeremiah. Jeremiah. And Jeremiah uh, 25 and 12. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith Yahu, for their iniquity in the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolation. Okay, so everybody sees a connection here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, hallelujah. Um, verse 29. Verse 29. For lo, I began to bring evil on the city, which is called by my name. Mm -hmm. And should ye be utterly unpunished? Mm -hmm. This is a question. Ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith you will of hosts. Okay, hallelujah. So um, the reason why we as Israelites, collectively as a people, went into captivity is because we broke the laws, statutes, and commandments. The Father put us under um, severe servitude under the Babylonians. And after that, we're coming out of um, captivity. Um, and so we have Daniel understanding the books of Jeremiah. Um, and this prophecy came to pass. So the 70 years is going to be um, extremely important. Verse 3. And so I, Daniel, set my... I'm back at Daniel, Don, the ninth chapter. Verse 3. And I, Daniel, set my uh, face unto Yahuwah Elohim to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, 
in ashes. All right, so this is the humble state that um, Daniel is in, and we can all learn um, a lot from this right here because this is the act of submission. So the act of submission here, what Daniel is doing, he set his face into the Father, um, the Father of Yahuwah by prayer through supplication, fasting, and sackcloth. And I prayed unto Yahuwah my Elohim and made my confession and said, O Father, the great and dreadful Elohim, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. What commandment is the father keeping or what covenant is the father keeping? Let's erase some of this right here. The father is long suffering. He has a lot of patience with the nation of Israel. All right. He's very tolerant, but it comes a point where we go beyond what we should Go, and there has to be some type of correction or punishment punishment made towards the nation of Israel. So the question now was that if Israel broke the covenant, and he, but he's remembering the covenant to keep us together, what covenant is the father remembering to keep his relationship going with the, um, the 12 tribes of Israel? Right. Right. So that cutting now between the two pieces is going to be very important. And like you said, now this also ties in with, um, with Shavuot. All with Shavuot. And so now when we are now actually married at Mount Sinai, the father is trying to um, implement this right here. And being that actually now this was broken, we know that the Levitical priesthood was put into place. Uh, priesthood. So this is a marriage. And so the last meal that the father, uh, that the Mashiach had with his Talmudim, uh, the bread and the wine, where the Mashiach didn't actually drink the wine, he was now trying to reintroduce this right here, this Melchizedek priesthood, or that marriage, versus this right here, the Levitical priesthood, which was implemented because Israel broke this um, in the wilderness. So there, there's a whole lot <laughs> that's going on with this prophecy with Daniel. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands exactly what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And I, Daniel, prayed unto Yahuwah, my Elohim, and made my confessions and said, O Father, the great and dreadful Elohim, keeping the covenant, and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So how do we know that we love the Father? Keeping the commandments. Hallelujah. Have, the, the, the commandments have to be kept. There's no other way around it. Mm -hmm. We, we have to make acknowledgement now, we have sinned and have done and have committed iniquity and have done wickedness and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto the servants, the prophets, who have spoken thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O sovereign, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces at this day. If we can have Brother um, James, Jacob, if you can do Ephesians 2.13, let me get that. Let me get it to Ephesians 2.13. Can we just finish reading verse 7, then you do 2.13. Uh, o sovereign, righteousness belong unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as it is this day. To the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all Israel that are near and that are far. That's going to be key. All Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries where thou hast driven them because of their trespass thou that thou have trespassed against thee. That they have trespassed against thee. Ephesians 2.13.
Yes, sir. Ephesians 2.13 But now in Yahushua HaMashiach, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach. Okay, so keeping everything in context, we know now that in order for there to be um, a relationship, both parties must agree. If one party breaks the agreement, there is no agreement. And so now we have a situation where by the blood of the Mashiach, and that's going to be very important, by the blood of the Mashiach, we are now brought near to um, this marriage relationship again. But who would be those that are near and those that are far? I'll read it again in Daniel 9, chapter verse 7. O sovereign, righteousness belongeth to thee, but unto us confusion of faces as at this day. To the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries, whether thou hast driven them because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. Then when you go to the book of Ephesians 2.13, you're trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. But now in the Mashiach, you who were far off are made near by the blood of the Mashiach. Who would that be? Referring to in verse 13. The dispersed. The dispersed. Hallelujah. So we're talking about now northern kingdom. So we're talking about Israel that was near and those that were far off. And we're now all brought back to the covenant, okay, through the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach. So this is some of the uh, ways, too, that we're able to uh, identify the Mashiach even in what they're calling um, the Old Testament. We have to pick up those keys there. Verse 8. O sovereign, to us belongeth confusion of faces again, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. We're going to go to the book of Baruch uh, 115. All right, the book of Baruch 115. I'm going to read 15, 16, and 17. Let's see how all of this meshes in together. It fits like a hand in the glove. We not, you, I mean, you can't make a mistake. If the glove fits, all right, um, we, we, we got a good to go. A good to go sign. And you should say, this is verse 15, Baruch 1, the first chapter, verses 15 to 17. And you should say to the sovereign, our Elohim belongeth righteousness, but unto us the confusion of faces. As it come to pass this day unto them of Judah and unto the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to our kings and to our princes and to our priests and to our prophets and to our fathers. For we have sinned before the Father, the Sovereign. I mean, it is so easy to understand the reason why we're in the situation that we're into today is because we broke the covenant. We did. And we're so thankful for the Father for sending his son, Yahushua HaMashiach, to bring um, that unlawful woman back to, to, to him again. And all this is being done by the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach. So rebellion is a no-no. The Mashiach came, shed his blood for the nation of Israel. So we must make sure that we continue on in this marriage covenant. Verse um, 16 and 17. Verse 9. To Yahuwah Elohim belongeth mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yahuwah Elohim to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his service to prophets. Now, this is Daniel making his prayer before the Father now. Yea, all Israel. Okay, and again, all Israel. Okay, me included. My, my name is there first. You don't see it, but it's there. All right? All Israel have transgressed the law, even by departing, that they might not obey the voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. The curse is poured upon us, and that and the other that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of Elohim, 
because we have sinned against him. So the reason why Israel is in the Babylonian captivity is because of sin, transgression. The reason why Israel is in the Persian captivity is because of sin, transgression. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spoken to us and against our judges and judged us. Now, was the judgment rightful uh, because the father brought us into captivity? Was it a rightful judgment? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, we should have been paid. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That is, that is the penalty. And so now we see uh, the patience and the long suffering. And the, um, the reason why the, Mashi the father had to send the Mashiach is because he didn't want to kill uh, this ungrateful woman, the nation of Israel. And so I'm going to send my son. He's going to shed his blood for the nation of Israel. And he have confirmed his words which he has spoken against us and against our judges and judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven have not been done as has been done unto Jerusalem. Wow. One more time. And he have confirmed his words which he spoke against the nation of Israel against our judges and has judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven have not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Father, that we might return from our iniquities and understand truth. If we can have Shalomo, if you can do Deuteronomy 28.15, and we're going to have Hakoti Yidiyah to do um, the book of Lamentations, the second chapter, verse 17. So Deuteronomy 28.15 and then uh, we're going to have Yediyah to do Lamentations 2.17. So let me just get it first. Deuteronomy 28.15. We want to make sure that everybody understands the, um, the severity of this, um, of this penalty here for breaking the law. 28 and again 15. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28, 15. But if it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah thy Elohim, to observe, to observe, to do all his commandments. And that's where, in my personal circle, when it says to do all, that has become a major problem. <laughs> a major, major problem. When... The Father gave us rules and regulations that we must abide by in order to stay in covenant relationship with him. I would strongly suggest that every single body, all right, so that um, these generational curses stop because a lot of people don't understand that generational curses exist. And so that the way that we break these generational curses is that we must make sure that we do all of the commandments, all of them. Read on. Voice of you uh, to observe to do all his stat all his commandments and all his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right, Hallelujah. So we're now going to go to the Book of Lamentation, um, two seventeen. <clears throat> Let me get that right quick. Book of Lamentation is be after Jeremiah. Jeremiah. That we got. Lamentations 2, 17. Yep, that's it. Okay. Lamentations 2, 17. Yahuwah hath done that which he had devised. He mm. hath fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He hath thrown down and hath not pity. And he hath caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He hath set up the horn of thine adversary. Wow. Wow. So I just want everybody to see how um, severe and what Daniel is actually doing. So he's actually, again, 
He sent his face towards the Father to seek by prayer through supplication with fasting and sackcloth, and he's praying now for the forgiveness of the sins of the nation of Israel. I'm going to back at 14. Therefore hath Yahuwah watched upon us or the, um, upon the evil and brought it upon us. For Yahuwah our Elohim is righteous in all his works which he, have, which he doeth, for we obey not his voice. But now, O sovereign, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee fame or renown, as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O sovereign, according to all thy righteousness I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from the city Jerusalem, the set-apart mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquity of our fathers, Jerusalem, and thy people are become a reproach to all them round about us. If we can get Shalomo, if you can do Leviticus, the 26th chapter, verses 40 to 42. Okay. You said the 25th? 26th. Yes, 26th. Leviticus 26, 40 to 42. I really want to bring this whole thing home for us to understand that we broke these laws, statutes, and commandments, and there must be a penalty or price paid for rebellion. 26, 40 to 42. Leviticus 26, 40 to 42. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers mm -hmm. with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humble, mm -hmm. and then and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, wow. then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham. Mm -hmm. Will I remember, and I will remember the land. Wow. <laughs> Listen, we can't make this up. Verse 17, now therefore, um, our sovereign, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication and cause thy face to shine upon the sanctuary that is desolate for Yahuwah's sake. O my sovereign, incline thy ear and hear, open thy eyes and behold our desolation. Look at our present um, situation and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O sovereign, hear. O sovereign, forgive. Sovereign, hearken and do. Defer not for thy own sake, O my father, for thy city and the people are called by thy name. Can anybody show me anywhere in scripture where any other nation is called by the name of of the father of your word. Yeah. That covenant that was made at Mount Sinai was made between the father, the son, and the nation of Israel, period. Anybody else was there was considered guest at the wedding, all right? Guest at the wedding. Um, where are we? Verse 20. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sins of my people Israel, the sins of my people Israel and presented my supplication before um, Yahuwah my Elohim for the holy mountain of my Elohim. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the visitation at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Now, verse 21 is very important because we're talking about the morning and the evening oblations, all right? So we're talking about um, prayer. In other words, when Israel was in captivity, the temple was destroyed, the people are in captivity, but we still have the morning, all right, and the evening um, sacrifices. So we have, again, the morning 
and the evening sacrifices, right? Is that correct? Morning. So, if the temple is destroyed, the priesthood is not set in order, how do we make uh, sacrifices to the Father? Even today, when we do our prayers, our morning and our evening um, prayers, how do we make um, sacrifices to the Father? How do we make sacrifices? Yeah, yeah because when the priests were there, they would do the animal sacrifices. Yeah. And that was our supplication to the Father. This is important. How do we now do our morning and evening supplications to the Father? Prayer. There we go. Tefillah. Prayer. This is how we do it. Even now, we don't have a standing priesthood. The way that we do the morning and evening prayers or um, supplications now is through prayer. This is what all makes sense. Now, um, if this happened now during the evening um, oblation, these um, morning prayers, the, the morning and evening prayer now is used in a particular luminary. Anybody, everybody knows it's, it's the sun. That's the luminary that's being used. And he um, and informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. And at the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth and I came to show thee. For thou art greatly beloved, Daniel. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Verse 24 is going to be like, kaboom! All right? Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Who are the people? All right? So, seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to bring reconciliation or to reconcile an end of sins and to bring reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So, 70 weeks is upon thy people, which is Israel, upon the holy city, which is Jerusalem. Now, this is where it gets real interesting now, is to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up division and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Who would that be? Who is the most, who is um, the most holy to be anointed? Yahushua Yahusha Mashiach. So if we can get um, Brother Yaakov to do the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, verse 8, 10, and 11. Isaiah 8, 10, 53. So skipping that? Or you said 8 through 11? Uh, we're going to do uh, 53, chapter 53. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do 8 through 11. Okay. Isaiah 53, verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For in the transgression of my people was he stricken. Right. So for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Anybody know who this person was? Okay, hallelujah. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because to because he had done no violence. Right, so he has to be that perfect sacrificial lamb. He had done no violence. Read on. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Yet it pleased, yet it pleased the Yahuwah mm -hmm. to bruise him. Mm -hmm. He had put him to grief. When thou sh when thou sh when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of Yahuwah shall prosper in his, in his hand. He shall, see of, he shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteousness servant, my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Right, hallelujah. So in the, um, 
So in the Greek Septuagint, we have the word, um, the word light is there. So he shall see the light of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge and shall, and shall my righteous servant, which is the Mashiach, justify many for he shall bear Israel their iniquity. So when we go back now to Daniel's, the, um, the ninth chapter, verse 24, we see that a prophecy now is being fulfilled in verse 24. Now, um, 70 weeks has been determined to the people now, 70 weeks. Let's do this now, do a little math, 70 weeks, we're not talking about weeks of years. 70 weeks we said was um, how many days? Right? That's 25. No, that was 70 years. That is 25. You see, 70, uh, 360 times 70, 42, 25. 21 to 21. Why are you multiplying 70? Yeah. Why are you applying 70? Oh, 42. Um, Forget the days. 21. No, we want to multiply uh, 360. Times um, seventy. No, why? that's why. Why? why. That's weeks. That's, that's not years. Oh, 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 oh and we talk about now 70 weeks. So we would now do 70 minus 52. Okay, we have the eight. And so we have 18, 10. So we have a total. So we see how we got this over here? Because we had 70 weeks, but there's 52 weeks in a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're gonna add 18 more weeks and so we have now the 70 weeks, and the way we got the 18 weeks is that you just subtracted the 70 from the 52. Why are you adding the 18? I mean, he's no, no, no. He, did, he subtracted and he added it. You see, because uh, there's 52 weeks in the, um, in the solar year. Right. Okay, and, and so there's, now there's 70, there's 70, 70, 70, 70 weeks uh, that we need to come to. So this is now, this year has now expired. Mm -hmm. So. So then you have 18. So you got 18 more weeks left. Right. Gotcha. Okay, so now, if this is now centered around the Mashiach, if we have a three and a half year ministry, and if there's 52 weeks in a year, and adding 18 more weeks gives us 70 weeks, but the Mashiach's ministry is 70 weeks, how do we get three and a half years? Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm, I'm going at? I mean, yeah, something with the math. I mean, what do you got? No, 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 no,
He's going to confirm the covenant with them for one week. So we have day one, day two, day three, day four, five, six, seven. All right. If you kept the key break, all right, we know that there's no such thing as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. According to scripture, the only day that, that has a name actually is the seventh day, and that day is called the Shabbat. Mm -hmm. All right? The Shabbat. And he should be cut off at what part of the week? Because seven days make a week. The Mashiach is going to be cut off in the midst of the week. So when was the Mashiach cut off? The fourth day. The fourth day. All right? So we have 70 weeks. All right? And 70 weeks are put in much, pretty much, I mean, if you're talking about um, one year, and um, let's say about six, uh, seven, 14, like two weeks, and a couple of days. The um, Mashiach, the 70, um, 70 weeks, 52 weeks in the year. 18, 18 weeks. Uh -huh. And then we had 18 other weeks. So we have, we have 4, 8, 12, 16, so like, four and a half. like four and a half weeks. Four and a half months. So about. That's what Somebody had to get about, okay, yeah, about four months and some change. Mm -hmm. Not quite five months. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's basically about how long uh, the Mashiach's ministry was. When you look at how many um, weeks is in a year, and when you added the 18 other weeks to the, 50, to the 52, give it a 70 weeks. So the Mashiach ministry was around one year and about four months, not quite five months. And we're going to show this in the book of Leviticus, the 26th chapter. Let's try that. Leviticus, the 26th chapter. We got our math scholars here to make sure everything goes totally old. We say Leviticus. Let me see. We might have to go back to Leviticus the twelfth. Yeah, Leviticus the twelfth chapter. Excuse me. Leviticus the twelfth chapter. Twelfth chapter. Let's see if we can get this thing together. Leviticus twelve. Exodus the twelfth chapter. It's Exodus Shemot. Okay, now we go. Exodus, the 12th chapter, we start at verse 4, I mean verse 1, 12 and 1. Exodus? Yes, the book of Exodus. Exodus, the 12th chapter, verse 1. And the sovereign spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speaking to all the congregation of Israel, saying, The tenth month, tenth day of this month, they shall take unto every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for the house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next into his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make account for the lamb. Watch the age of the lamb. Your lamb should be without blemish, because this lamb is a representation of the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. Your lamb should be without blemish, a male of the first year, not three years, a male of the first year, and you should take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you should keep it up into the um, into the evening. It's supposed to kill it between the two evenings. I just wanted to bring out the point here now that the age of the lamb must be of the first year, not three years old. Everything has to fit according to prophecy. All right, so it can be a year old, a year in, in two months, three months, four months, six months, but it can't be two years old. If it's two years old, we're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, here we go. The book of John, the infamous book of John. 
John the fourth chapter. Okay. John the second chapter. We're going to start at John the second chapter and we're going to do verse 1 to 13. I'm going to read that. See, everybody's going to be, we have to make sure that we catch all of this. In the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of the Mashiach was there. And both the Mashiach was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of the Mashiach said unto him, They have no wine. The Mashiach said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there was set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purification of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. The Mashiach said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear it to the governor of the feast, and they bared it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it was. And then it has in parentheses. But the servants which drew the water, they knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And said to them, Every man at the beginning do have set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but now thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of the miracles did the Mashiach in Canaan of Galilee and manifested forth his esteem and the disciples uh, believed on him. After this, he went down to Capernaum, the city of comfort, he and his mother and his brother and the disciples, and they continued not many days. Verse 13, and the Yahudim's Passover was near at hand. And the Mashiach went up to Jerusalem. Why did the Mashiach go up to Jerusalem? Because it was coming near to Passover. Now, we're going to go to the book of John, the fifth chapter. John, the fifth chapter. Um, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And the Yahudins went up to Jerusalem. Anybody know what feast this was? Okay, first of all, um, okay, we do it this way. After Pesach, what is the next feast? Because we're trying to share here now the, um, the one-year ministry of the Mashiach. You said after Pesach, I'm on the bread, right? After Pesach, we have Shavuot. Shavuot. Hallelujah. Yeah, Shavuot. Now, if we go to the book of John, the sixth chapter. I'm looking for bread comes before Pesach. Hmm? I'm looking for bread comes before Pesach. Uh, yeah, Passover, the killing of the lamb, then you have um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You eat the lamb with the unleavened bread. Yeah. And then after that, you know, um, we have Pesach, Eleven Bread, the Waving of the Sheep, Far from Shavuot. We have Yom Teruah. We have Yom, Yom Kippur and Sukkot. Okay, um, we have now the book of John. We're still in the book of John, the sixth chapter, verse one. I'm going to start at six and one. And after these things, the Mashiach went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles which he did on them, that were diseased. And the Mashiach went into a mountain, and there he sat with his Talmud and his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. What festival is being held at verse 4? Passover. Passover, right. Now, watch how that's not Passover. Three times a year in the book of Deuteronomy 16 and 16, all males must report to Jerusalem. You report to Jerusalem for Passover, Shavuot, and you also report there for the Feast of Sukkot. Now, after these things, the Mashiach went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them, that were diseased. 
Mashiach went up into a mountain, and there he sat with the disciples, and the Passover and the feast of the Jews was near. The Mashiach cannot be on the top of the mountain, okay, when he is supposed to be in Jerusalem at this time. The next festival after Shavuot is, anybody know? Pesach. The feast. No, no, Pesach. Trumpets, right? Is that Shavuot? Trumpets. So after Shavuot, uh, after Shavuot, we have trumpets. Yeah, what's, what's... I'll read down a little bit more. Um, yeah, because what I'm going to have to do is, um, is at some point read the whole story. Uh, let me read down here a little bit. After these things, the Mashiach went over the Sea of Galilee. Okay, so he's, he's over in, in Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed the Mashiach because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And the Mashiach went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. And so now the last feast that we had was Shavuot. And so everything would have to go in chronological order. So from the feast of Shavuot into Passover the next year, that means that we have a whole big gap of over a year where there's no recordings of the Mashiach. And that's not what's happening here. The next festival that comes after Shavuot is the blowing of the trumpets or Yom Teruah. Because when the Mashiach then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come um, unto him, he said with Philip, when shall we buy bread? Okay, so this bread here now is artos, which means leavened bread. During Passover now, you can't have leavened bread. It has to be unleavened bread. So we know now is that when it talks about this feast now in chapter 4, that is not Passover. It is actually now the next festival that comes after Shavuot, which is now Yom Teruah. One of, one of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, said it to him, There is a lad here which uh, has five barley loaves and two small fishes, but where are they um, among so many? So we know that the Mashiach now is about to sit down and feed 5,000 people, okay? So that's not his proper place to be if this was actually Passover. So again, one more time, this is the, um, the blowing of the trumpets. This is Yom Teruah. Now, uh, the book of John, the seventh chapter. The seventh chapter would be verses one through two. After these things, the Mashiach walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in to have jewelry because well, they got... We're at John chapter, chapter 6. Uh, 7. seven. <coughs> chapter 7. Verse 2. Yeah, verses 1 through 2. Right. After these things, the Mashiach walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in jewelry because the Yahudim sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. So we see how after Yom Teruah, we have the next festival now, which is Sukkot. But if you go now to the book of Luke, the ninth chapter, watch this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because we missed one, right? Because after Yom Teruah, there's another festival. Or another acknowledgement of uh, one of the other seven feast days. Anybody know which feast day that is? Right, the Day of Atonement. Let's see if we can find the Day of Atonement. Luke, the ninth chapter, and we're going to start <coughs> at verse 1. Verse 1. Now he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all uh, devils or disagreeable ones and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of Elohim and to heal the sick. And he said it to them, take 
nothing for your journey, neither staves nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house you enter into, into there, abide and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed, these are the Talmudines now, and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing every, everywhere. Verse 7. Now Herod, the Tetriarch, heard all that was done by him. And everybody know who this him is at this point? All right, Yahusha, the Mashiach. Now Herod the Tetriarch heard all that was done by him, and he was perplexed because that it was said of some, some that John was risen from the dead. That's going to be key. Now, John the Baptist is the harbinger, all right? He's the forerunner. Anybody know when John the Baptist died? Yeah, because there is a chronology. Huh? He was beheaded, right? Right, yeah, he was beheaded by, by, by Herod because um, Herod has spoke out against the, um, the marriage practice of Herod when he took on his brother's sister while he's still alive. And um, the daughter, she, was, she must have been doing some, some hell of a dance, all right, because um, Herod got... Um, he fell into a trance. And so um, the mother said, listen, you know what? Ask of John the Baptist's head, all right? But Herod understood John the Baptist to be a, a prophet. We have Shavuot, and the next festival is Yom Teruah. Between Shavuot and Yom Teruah, we have John the Baptist now being beheaded by Herod. Between those two, I don't know exactly when, but it's between um, Shavuot and Yom Teruah, we have the beheading of John the Baptist. Watch how this gets so interesting. Now Herod the Tetriarch heard all that was done by him, and he was perplexed because that it was said of some that John was risen from the dead, and some that Elias had appeared, and others that one of the old prophets was risen again. Now Herod said, John have I beheaded, but who is this of whom I heard such things? And he desired to see him. And the apostles, when they were returned, told him, all that had been done, and he took them and went privately into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. And the people, when they knew it, followed the Mashiach, and he received them and spoke unto them of the kingdom of Elohim, and healed them that had need of healing. And when the day began to wear away, then came the twelve and said unto him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the towns and countries round about and lodge and get victuals. For we are here in a desert place, okay? So this is not a festival. The Day of Atonement where Israel or everybody must report to Jerusalem, all right? Only doing Pesach again, Shavuot, and uh, the Feast of Sukkot. Those are only three times. But he said unto them, give you them to eat. And they said, we have no more but five loaves and the two fish and set me go and buy meat for all this people. And they were about 5,000 men. And he said unto the disciples, make them sit down by fifties and companies. And they did so and made them all sit down. And he took the five loaves and two fish and looking up uh, to heaven, he blessed them and break and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. And they did eat and were all filled and there was taken up fragments and remained of them 12 baskets. You know that the 12 baskets represents the 12 tribes of Israel. And the word fragments means the remnant or the residue of the leftovers. So we're talking about only a remnant. Only a remnant is going to be gathered into this basket. We're talking about a harvest season. All right? Real easy. And it came to pass as he was alone praying. So he's now by himself. 
the Mashiach is alone praying. His disciples were with him. Okay, let me speed up here a little bit. And they asked him, saying, Whom said the people that I am? And they answered and said, John, the Baptist. But some say Elijah, and others say one of the old prophets is risen again. And we see that now what Herod is not worried because he believed that John the Baptist to be a, um, a prophet. So he believed that at this point that maybe John the Baptist had um, resurrected. He said to them, but whom say thou that I am? Peter answered and said, the Mashiach or the anointed one of, uh, of Yahuwah. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be slain and be raised the third day that's going to be very important so now getting back to this right here we have the 70 weeks ministry of the mashiach all right and so we already did the math on it now. So we're talking about one year, 18 weeks is going to now bring us to about the fourth month. And the last seven days of the Mashiach is going to be very important. The Mashiach is cut off in the midst of the week. Okay, and so he's in the ground now. I'm going to put it this way. On the 15th, the 16th, and he resurrects on the 17th. So he's on the ground, he's in the ground this day, this day, this day, and he resurrects on this day here. All right? That day. You see how I got to 15th, 16th, and 17th? Mm -hmm. Because we know that the lamb is killed between the two evenings on the 14th. Okay, and so now the 15th is the day that we're eating the lamb with 11 bread, mm -hmm. the 16th, and the 17th. All right, he resurrects on the 17th. This is the first day of the week. Mary goes to the tomb, okay, and so um, he's already risen, all right? So um, if it's saying now is that it was the beginning to dawn towards the next day, okay, so we know that, again, it's, it's the start of the first day of the week, but the Mashiach had already risen. Great, hallelujah. See, we have a, listen, we are on point. Okay, uh, verse 23, and he said to them, if any man should come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross sometimes and follow me. No, it says daily, all right? This is something that we must do daily. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man's advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. When he shall come in his own esteem and in his father's and of the set apart angels or messengers. But I tell you of a truth. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death until they see the kingdom of Elohim. Another word for kingdom is marriage. All right? Marriage. Verse 28. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings. At eight days. So we have the Mashiach now attending Yom Teruah. Eight, about eight days later, because we still have now this trans, uh, transpiring of, excuse me, of this whole event here where he's feeding the, um, the 5,000. But we're now at Yom Teruah. And about eight days later now brings us to what festival? Anybody know? Uh, Before I give the answer. Okay, let me write it on the book. I like to write on the board because a lot of times it helps me to see them also. There we go. Okay, so we have now, we have Young Teruah. Young Teruah, all right? Then we have the feeding of the 5,000. 
right? The feeding of the 5,000. It doesn't give us an exact um, how many days that this whole thing took with the feeding of the 5,000. But we do have that it says now about eight days later, eight days later, we have another event coming. So after Yom Teruah now, we have on the 10th day of the seventh month, the Day of Atonement. All right? Good. Great. Hallelujah. Watch what happens. But I tell you the truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of Elohim. And it came to pass in about eight days after these saying, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mount to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, Moses, the lawgiver, Elijah, the prophet, who appeared in esteem and spoke of his decease, his death. Okay, so now the Day of Atonement is so important. The Day of Atonement is because the Mashiach now is going to actually now die for the sins of the nation of Israel. That's the war right now. Watch how all of this goes. It's so important. At Pesach. Pesach is a mirror image of, and this is the first month. It is a reflective mirror image of the seventh month. This is the first month. This is the seventh month. During Pesach, the month of importance is the first day, the tenth day, and the fifteenth day. The first day of the year, okay, the acknowledgement of the land. The tenth day is the inspection of the land. The fifteenth is when you're eating the lamb with unleavened bread. In the seventh month, the first day we have Yom Teruah, which is an announcement of the king. The tenth day, you have the Day of Atonement. And the fifteenth day, we have the days of Alam Sukkot. You, you see how the, the mirror is? Because from, from the fifteenth to the twenty-first, this is all on love and bread. From the fifteenth to the twenty-first, this is the Feast of Sukkot. See the image? I mean, it's, it's replicating, it's duplicating the same thing. All of this prophecy here is all outlined in the perfect works of the Father of Yahuwah. Any questions? So we have this transfiguration that's happening on the top of the mount. Okay, but Peter um, and they that were with him Okay, where we at here? Da, da, da. Back at um, Luke, the ninth chapter, verse 30. Luke 9 and 30. And behold, there talked with them two men, which were Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, the prophet, who appeared in, um, in his esteem, and he spoke of his death, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they were, um, were with him, were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his esteem and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto uh, the Mashiach, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make here three tabernacles. Okay, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Okay, and not knowing what he said, while he thus spoke, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared, and they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of, out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. That's fascinating, all right? Because prior to this now, you see this happening now with 
the immersion mm -hmm. when John the Baptist yeah. now immerses the Mashiach. And so John the Baptist says, I must increase so that the Mashiach can uh, decrease, so that the Mashiach can increase, all right? Mm -hmm. And so we have the same thing happening here now is that we have Moses and we have Elijah. Mm -hmm. And so we have Peter now wants to make three tabernacles mm -hmm. for each one of these men here. A cloud overshadows them. Moses removed out of the way, mm -hmm. and we have Elijah moved out of the way. Mm -hmm. This is my son. All right, hear you him. Yeah. Are greater than Moses, are yeah. greater than yeah. Elijah is come. Yeah. This is the one that's going to be that atoning sacrifice for the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was just prophets now, prophesying of the coming of the Mashiach. Right. There's not enough emphasis put on the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really have to pay very close attention now to the redemptive, redemptive plans of the Father is to redeem that unlawful, that ungrateful woman back into covenant relationship. Mm -hmm. And when I begin to read and see these things here, it's the reason why I am the way that I am, is that the tolerance has to be like zero. Mm -hmm. Zero. Because there's nothing else for the Father to do. Moses has come and did what he needed to do, and we rejected Moses. We rejected Elijah. We rejected all of the prophets. It was us who killed the prophets. But I'm going to send the Mashiach. It is very important that we hear all of the words of Torah. All of it. Anything else outside of obeying all of the covenant here is going to now put you in default, and you will not be able to make it at that marriage supper. Right. You can't be there. And so again, Pesach, the first day of, um, of the new year, the 10th to 15th, is a mirror now of the coming of the Mashiach on the first of Yom Teruah. The 10th now is Yom Kippur. And then the 15th to the 21st now is actually now the groom tabernacling with the bride. All right. Now, we're going to go back now to John the seventh chapter, and I'm going to read verses one through two, and we're almost done. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. John, the seventh chapter, verse one through, we're going to read down a little bit. After these things, the Mashiach walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry or amongst the Jews because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the feast, now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at, at hand, which is the seventh month, the fifteenth day. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Remember now, his because you have to be in Jerusalem at this time. His brethren therefore said unto him, the Mashiach, Depart hence and go into Judea that thy disciples also may see the works that thou hast, that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself speaketh, or seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. The world is Jerusalem. That's the governing body at this time. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then said, then Mishael said to them, my time is not yet come, but your time always is ready. The world, which is Jerusalem, cannot hate you, but me it hated, because I testify against Jerusalem, or the religious leaders in Jerusalem, he's testifying against them. The works thereof are evil. Go you up into the feast, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, watch this now, I go not up yet into the Feast of Tabernacles. My time is not yet fully come. When he has said these words unto them, he stayed, which is the Mashiach, in Galilee. The Mashiach must be at the Feast of Tabernacles. Three times a year, all males must report to Jerusalem. But it's coming now to a close, to an end of the Mashiach's ministry. They're about to kill him. But the only way that we can see this in its entirety now is that we're going to have to read all of the book of John, all of it, 
And what I'm trying to do now is take out clippets to help us to understand. I'm trying to like do like a quick version of it, but it would make sense now if we were to just read uh, from the book of John, the first chapter, all the way to the end. And that's going to take a whole lot of time. So at some point at your leisure, you're going to have to read now all of the book of John, all of the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all of it, because it's a puzzle. And we have to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Like, for example, last week we all saw Prometheus. All right? I was from this, on this couch, to her, yeah, she was at the other end, um, Zabud and Yunya Ishai. I mean, we was all at different angles, but I guarantee you, if we all gave a recap of Prometheus, we would all say something different. It's not that any of us is, is, is lying, but from our position and our, and our mindset and what we were seeing and how we were actually translating what we we're seeing, that's how we're going to now tell the story. But we must put the story together to make it one story. So Matthew's not lying, Mark is not lying, Luke is not lying, and John is not lying. <laughs> it's how we now as investigators are going to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Now watch this. When he, has seen, um, when he has said these words unto them, which is his time of day, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went the Mashiach also up into the feast, not openly, but it was in secret. Then the Jews saw him at the feast and said, where is he? These Jews now were the religious leaders because they're now looking to kill him. And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, he is a good man. Others says, no, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit, no man spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the midst of the feast, okay, about the midst of it now, the Mashiach, he went up into the temple and he taught. There he is. Okay, then. Because we can't have any fault in the Mashiach. If there's one fault in the Mashiach, know what? He's not the lamb, and we're still in our sins, yeah. Yeah. all right? Yeah. He must follow protocol mm -hmm. to the T. Now, um, now about the midst of the feast, the Mashiach went up into the temple, and he taught. And the Jews now, or the religious leaders, they marveled. They're like, what? Saying, how knoweth this man Torah, or letters, having never learned. He didn't learn amongst us. So where did he get all of this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? The Mashiach answered them, my doctrine is not mine, but this, but his that sent me. If any man would do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Elohim or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own esteem. But he that seeketh his esteem that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? And yet, so he's talking against the religious leaders now. And yet none of you keep the law. Why go you before about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil. Who goeth about to kill thee? The Mashiach answered and said unto the religious leaders, I have done one work, and you all marvel. Moses therefore gave you circumcision, not because it was of Moses, but of the fathers. And you on the Shabbat day circumcise a man. If a man on the Shabbat day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry at me, which is the Mashiach, because I made a man every bit whole on the Shabbat day. Now, we remember now the man that was um, paralyzed, right? paralyzed. Exactly. And this was interesting now was that this man, he now, he, he's healed. And what's interesting about the whole thing is that it was because of the man's sin that brought upon, uh, about that element that he was, you know, like a paralyzed, like, like a paraplegic. Really? Yeah, and so that it was because of his own sin. And again, like I said, I mean, there's so much in the book of John that we're going to have to, like, at some point, read the whole story. But again, the Mashiach, he heals this man on the Shabbat, 
And, um, and they found fault with that because he, again, he made a man whole on the Shabbat. Mm -hmm. The book of John, the 10th chapter, verse 22. Okay, and we got one more after that, and we will be done. The book of John, the 10th chapter. Chapter, verse, verse 22. Okay. Uh, I'm starting at 15. I'm starting at 15. The verse 14. I am, which is the Messiah, I am the good shepherd. And I obviously know my sheep and have known of mine, which is the sheep. As the Father knoweth me, which is the Messiah, even know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Mm -hmm. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Who are the other sheep? The lost Northern kingdom, right, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there should be one fold and one shepherd. That's reunification. Mm -hmm. Therefore doeth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down on myself. I have power to lay it down, I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my father. There was a division, therefore, um, again, among the Yahudins for these sayings. And many of them said, he had a devil and is mad. Why hear you him? Others said, these are not the words of him that have a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Now watch this now. It was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And the Mashiach walked um, in the temple of Solomon's porch. What festival are we now in? According to verse 22. If you can read 1 Maccabees 4.59. Anybody have that? Just got to get it. Maccabees, the fourth chapter, verse 59. Moreover, Judas and his brethren and the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their seasons from year to year by the space of eight days, from the five and twentieth day, which is the twenty-fifth day of the month of Kessel, which is um, which would be December, with myrrh and gladness. So we have now um, the dedication, the rededication of the temple that was destroyed by the Jews. But everybody understands the whole story about the Maccabees. So this is not a seven-day festival. But we do see here that the Mashiach now is, uh, is walking in the temple in Solomon's porch at the Feast of Dedication, and it was now winter. And the last one, Mishpachar, is the book of John, the 11th chapter, verses 55 and 11. John, verses 55 and verse 11? Mm-hmm. So John 11, 11, 11, 55, oh, yeah. John the 11, chapter verses 55 and 57. All right. Let me start at verse 53. Yeah, again, all of John has to be read, but I, I'm, I'm, I, have to, I have to keep it kind of quick because we'll be here until next Saturday. Um, the Mashiach therefore walked them more openly among the Yahudims. Where are you at? Uh, 54. Is it 54? Yeah, 11 and 54. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. All right, all right. So you would have 53. Uh, 54. Uh, yeah, 53. Sorry, 53. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put the Mashiach to death, which are um, the Jewish people um, or the Yahudims, uh, the religious leaders. So they sought to put the Mashiach to death. The Mashiach therefore walked no more openly among the religious leaders, but went thence into a country near to the wilderness into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Yahudim's Passover was near at hand. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for the Mashiach and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple what think you that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. So we have 
The first Pesach that happened in John, the second chapter, verse, second chapter, verse 13. And we have the last one that's coming up, which is in the book of John, the 11th chapter, verses 53 to 57. So the very last one that's about to come up, the Mashiach is going to die for the nation of Israel. And that's our um, one-year ministry of Yahusha Mashiach. All right. Are there any questions? So we're going to go back over this again. We had a, a, a quick version of it. I just wanted to share with everybody that there is no three and a half year ministry of Mother Mashiach. In an ending, I just want to say it just one more time. I'm 70 years. All right. We talked about the 70 years. Let's see, the 70 weeks. We're going to do that another time, the 70 weeks of years. We have the, um, the 70 weeks. Hmm? Uh, 70 weeks. So we had said now that um, if there's 52 weeks in a solar year, 52 weeks in a solar year, you know, 52 weeks in a solar year, we had talked about that. We had talked about um, 360 days in a prophetic year. This is prophecy. And we talked about um, a little bit, 354 days in a, um, a lunar year. In these 70 weeks here, even if we went um, 360 days, let's do that, we didn't do that math. 360 days, we would have to find out how many weeks is in a year. So if it's 70 weeks, and we were to multiply that, what, uh, or divide that, what about, by 360, is it? What is it? No, we, we, uh, the 52 weeks, this is, this is a solar count. Oh, okay. So we're going to do now. We're going to do the 52, the solar. Is a solar, is a solar year. Okay, all right. So we want to find out now how many, how many um, weeks now are actually in 360 days? Anybody got the calculators out? 365, 365 by 7. 70. Because there's 70 weeks. Three, six, so how many? How many? Divided by 7 equals 51.4. Oh. You said 360. 360 days divided by, by uh -huh. 7 days, right? 70. Yeah, we want to. Yeah, but right, actually, it's seven, seven days in a week. Oh, right, right. Yeah, right. Seven days in six days. Right. Equals 51.428571.4. So, okay. fifty-two really. Okay, we have 360. Make sure I'm at. Right, so we don't have um, a quite um, 52 weeks. Right. And so the reason why the, uh, we're using the 52 weeks here is because the Mashiach, his whole ministry was centered around agriculture. Right. Um, he's at sacrificial lamb. Um, the beginning of the year, you go to Exodus, the 12th chapter, the beginning of the year is talking about there is, is, is a solar year. It's not a, 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 a lunar year of 354. But we'll talk a little bit about that next Saturday. But I just wanted to share here now is that, again, 52 weeks, and we're looking into, um, this is one year, and 70 weeks, we just subtract 52 from 7, just again, we got 8, and that was 18, and 18 extra weeks, this brought us about 4 months and some change, and we just wanted to show that, again, the Mashiach's ministry was only a year and 4 months, and so not 3 and a half years. And I pray that uh, we could able to get some understanding from that. If anybody have any questions. You know, that, that's amazing, Mari, because it, I was always told everything that we we know about in the Christian church is uh, the Mashiach's uh, uh, ministry started at 30 and ended at 33. That, yeah, he, his, 
Yeah, yeah he was a nurse true. around 33 years old. He's a ministry again at about 33, and uh, and he died like the, the next year. Yeah, there, but in the Christian church, they say it started at 30, and then the, and then why he he died at 33. So this lets you know how a lot of times they just don't do the math. You see. Wow. I mean, what we're going to have to do also too is that we are show the um, how John the Baptist is actually six months older right. than the Mashiach, and that whole thing we have the twenty-four course of the body job. We need to go go into that. But uh, now there's no three and a half year ministry at, at, at all because uh, that will disqualify the lamp. The lamp can only be um, a year to a year and a half years old in order to be uh, that perfect sacrificial lamp. A lamb of three years old being sacrificed is not in prophecy at all. And again, Mr. Picard, that's going to be today's class. He said the lamb, uh, like the Passover lamb, the Passover lamb has to be um, between a year and a year and a half. It can't be um, three years old. And it tells us that in uh, Exodus the 12th chapter. Yep, Exodus the 12th chapter. It tells us about that. Also, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, it tells us that uh, 23 and 12, and you shall offer that day when you wave the sheep offering and lamb without blemish of the first year, or burnt offering to Yahuwah uh, of the first year. So it, it has to be of the first year, none of the second year. Of the second year, we make the lamb to a whole. And that was Exodus 23 and 12. Um, Leviticus, uh, no, the one Exodus. Oh, the one is Exodus, the 12th chapter. Uh, the 12th chapter. Just read verses like 1 through 5. You say, Your lamb should be without blemish, which is Mashiach of the first year. Uh, you shall take it out of, from the sheep or from um, among the goats. Has to be of the first year. Okay, I'm gonna blow the show far, and that's gonna be today's service. Yep, that's today's service, Mr. Cox. All right, so we're gonna blow the show far, and yeah. uh, we'll have. Zabu to bring us in, oh, Zabu to bring us in, I'll close it out with prayer. Let's see if we have some good sound on the so far. <laughs> Continue to add blessings into the mores, Father, who continue to week after week to labor, Father, in your vineyard, Father. 
picking us, our brains, making us think, making us look at things over and over again and be able to get rid of dispelling all the myths that we have been taught through the years, Father. Thank you for waking us up. Hallelujah. Thank you for waking us up, Father. Yeah. Thank you for letting us be able to see uh, who this Mashiach was. Father, there's so many people that discount him, that try to make it that he's not deity, that try to make him that he's nothing. But what he did, Father, that could not be repeated. Father, you can't make this stuff up. The stuff that he did, he, it was clockwork all the way down. Every moment, every word he spoke, everything he did was for a purpose. And we thank you for that purpose, Father. That purpose was to bring about the children of Yasharal mm -hmm. back to a place where we are clean, righteous, set apart, mm -hmm. and ready for the marriage. That's right. We thank you, Father. We praise your set apart name. We ask that you look in upon the brothers and the sisters, Father God, who are in the congregation of Yasharal. Father, we ask you to look upon those who are um, who are uh, out there, Father, uh, who still are to sleep, and ask you that you would wake them up, Father. We thank you for Moray uh, uh, Shovel, uh, Father, our Kosovan, Father, who is preparing a, a, a men's meeting for us on next week, and ask that. All the people who are going to be there will come ready to learn, Father. I pray that you would um, lead us and guide us, Father, give us safe passage up there so that when we return, Father, we will have an awesome report, Father. Have we have sat down and we have breaking bread once again, Father. This is the best food we're going to get all week, Father. We thank you for that. We praise you for that. I pray, Father, that you will look in upon, uh, again, uh, uh, Maury, uh, I mean, um, Morning in training, Shalak Yahoo Father, who has been exposed to the virus, and ask that you would touch his heart, that you would look in upon his family. Thank you that the baby is not there, Father, but we ask that you would look in upon he and Taya, Father, and have let them to be well and to, to be here with us, Father, in the next couple of weeks, Father, when they have gone through this quarantine uh, uh, period. We ask that you would give them peace, that you would give them. Um, uh, 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 throughout the week that you would give, let their hearts be subtle, Father, in you. Father, I ask that you, uh, Baruch, the hands and prepare the food, Father, and make it nourishment for our bodies, Father, uh, and our, our minds, Father, uh, as your word is to our minds, Father. We, yet our labor is in there, Father, every week, Father, just trying to prepare a meal for us, Father, and uh, we thank you. We appreciate it. Oh, yes. But we thank you. We thank you for the other women in the congregation, Father, who has also labored with her, Father. We ask that you will look in upon um, those who are sick, who are shut in. We ask that you will touch a broken heart, that you will lift up a bowed down head, Father, and that you will allow us to be able to move forward, Father, in your word, Father, as one in unity. Uh, ask you, Baruch Mori uh wherever he is today, Father, and that you will continue to uh, Baruch his Isha as well. And uh, your soul, and Terry, Teheria, Father, who's not with us today, that you will Baruch her wherever she is and whatever she's doing, and that you will just continue to Baruch each and every one else. So, Mori, uh, Yermiyahu, and his Isha as well. Uh, it's your son, Yahushua's name, we pray. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.